Welcome to Coast View, the show that celebrates the men and women who are making coastal Mississippi such a great place to live, work, and play. Hey, we've got a great show today. We have Milton Segura in the first part of the show, Linda Hornsby from the uh, Hotel and Lodging Association in the second half, and then we're going to have the Harrison County Fire Chief, Pat Sullivan, at the end of the show. Hey, before we move over to Milton, um, can you join me for a second, Kyle? Are you there? Let's see. Hang on. In, in the bunker, I'm here. <laughs> Kyle's at the studio working through the live show as we try to continue to do this remotely. Hey, so we have 90L that's out in the Bay of Campeche. Some of the models sort of bring it toward us, but man, we're several days away from having to worry about that one. Let's just hope it veers off to the west and yeah, we have there's to give it another thought. 165 models and 165 destinations. <laughs> exactly. People are already already posting sort of the doom runs, you know, don't worry about it yet, guys. It's, it's time to get some rest and catch a breather. Kyle, did you have fun at the game last weekend? Uh, yes, I did, actually. It was we. It was different. Yeah. But I had fun. We'll I'll talk to you next week about how that went. Let's bring. Let's go ahead and bring Milton in. And uh, one of the things we were talking about before we before we uh, came came live was that um, we had um, you know the Saints have uh, a, a really key injury, a high ankle sprain for Michael Thomas, and he's going to be out like three or three to five weeks. And I learned it. You know, Milton's kind of a Saints fan. Milton? Yes, I am. <laughs> I, I'm having fun, you know, but the first game, my first NFL game was last year. So it was a great um, um, opportunity for me to enjoy the Saints. Uh, that It was against the uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. We won. So it was great. Uh, what can I say? Yeah. So Milton, as you guys know, is a real good friend to the show. He's the, he's the leader, the executive director of the Coastal Mississippi Tourism Effort. And um, he's just been a great addition. In fact, I wanted to tell you, uh, I had Richard Chenoweth recently. Mark Henderson recently, Rob Stinson, and then yesterday I had the mayors from Biloxi and Gulfport at the same time, where Billy Hughes talked about one of the important moves that we made as a community was bringing you to coastal Mississippi. Oh, because thank you so you much. Because you such a numbers approach. You're so strategic about the way you approach things. And, you know, I've continuously uh, sung your praises on the show because I, I'm, I'm a big believer in Milton Seguera. I think that you- Thank you so much. Thank you so much. A, been a great addition to, to this effort, and you've been on to it from the beginning as it relates to the pandemic. But anyway, how are things going? Aren't you thrilled that uh, uh, Sally paid a visit to somewhere else? Absolutely. I mean, we uh, we 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 didn't want that to happen. Obviously, uh, we're paying a lot of attention to how we can help our friends in Alabama and Florida. We'll do as much as possible. They are great people, and uh, tourism is very important for them. So I, I hope they can come back as soon as possible. But um, I mean, those names that you mentioned, I'm so honored. My family and I were so honored to be here and, and do what we do for, for you guys. It's an honor. It's a pleasure. And we'll continue doing this hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder with all the leadership in the coast. So I'm, I'm humbled and I'm honored. Thank you so much, Ricky. Well, I said, you know, the truth is, as we've said so many times before, we're really aligned in coastal Mississippi. It's a strong region. We've got really good leadership here. And, um, you know, I said that last week, no offense to any past appointees to the tourism board, but to have this regional group focused on reg the region and to see who is on it. I mean, we're talking about entrepreneurs and incredibly successful business people, people who are passionate about coastal Mississippi. You really have the dream team working around you, don't you? Absolutely. And, and the next frontier, Ricky, is to think regionally. Uh, we need to make sure we, we did actually all the leadership they took the steps to have this regional organization now it's you know we have the structure we have the infrastructure we need to think about on a regional basis all the decision has to be made on a regional approach which is very important and you know um listening to the to your show from recently from ashley edwards and your conversation i mean the way this coast came together to handle sally it's it's a it's a testament to Everything, anything, it's possible for us here in the coast. We need to pay the same type of approach to the other decisions we need to make in the coast. If we think in that common goal, like like it was save lives and property uh, when Sally was coming, if we can if we can use that as the very same approach to the other very important decisions that we have to make in the coast, we'll be more successful. It's just we need to make more. sure we do that. 
yesterday with Billy Hughes and, and uh, Mayor Fofo Gillich, I actually said when we have a common enemy, but I meant to say when we have a common enemy and a common opportunity, Absolutely. whether it be economic development or tourism or fighting COVID or whatever the situation might be, when we come together as one, we are, I mean, we're strong. We can, I mean, we are really, first of all, we got great leadership and great vision, but we're not just competing, you know, re regionally across the Gulf South. We're competing across the United States and the opportunities we have to show our competitive advantage, not just in the COVID environment, although that does create an opportunity for the, for the relative near future, just going forward. I mean, I think it, it reminds us what is so incredibly special about the collection of communities that make up coastal Mississippi. We're, we're lucky to have um, leadership who get that. Uh, that. We certainly heard that from Fofo Gillich and, and Mayor Billy Hughes yesterday. And, uh, you know, you, I know you hear it every day. Yeah. And, and let me tell you, you know, as you know, COVID has been a, a, you know, it has hit us really hard. Just to share with you and your audience some numbers, since March until Labor Day, the revenue loss for the entire state of Mississippi, it's estimated in more than $2 billion. More than $2 billion, Ricky, that's, that's significant money, which translates into more than $220 million less in taxes at federal, state, and local levels. So, and why I'm saying this, because typically, we here at Coastal Mississippi, we represent most likely 35, 36% of all the expenditures and the revenues. I can assure you, with this COVID-19 scenario, that most likely in this case, we're perhaps more 40, 45, maybe even 50% of those revenue losses. So the impact to the coast has been very significant. Having said that, I have to tell you that the resilience and the plan we put in place in conjunction with all the stakeholders, the casino, and all the other members of the industry, and the media and the elected officials, is what, what we're seeing that the numbers are coming back all, right now, Ricky, we're only 24% behind last year. And that's remarkable because in other places, not only here in the state, but as well in the, in the, in the nation, some people are still 50 or 60% behind. So not that bad for us in, in this um, respect. Yeah, you know, Dale Lyons made a good point last week. It'd be interesting to see, I'm just, what, what are your thoughts about this? That as people can't go to uh, college football games and whatever, they're, they're going to feel cooped up. There's an opportunity for them to come visit Coastal Mississippi really during some of the most beautiful times of the year. What are your thoughts that that really creates maybe an opportunity for us? Oh, absolutely. You know, the, the reason why Coastal Mississippi has been so successful, um, number is three efforts. The, the first one is we were honest with the people and we said, you know what, guys, wait until we're ready. Don't, don't, don't come now. Number two, the casinos came back in May. And the third one is we never disconnected from them. We, we kept information. And after that, what we can offer, Ricky, is, is room to roam. And people were looking for that. People were driving. The cars became their temple. You know, this is, I, I'm not going to fly. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to places where I can drive and I feel safe. And we presented that to the, to the, to the surrounding areas. And specifically about uh, sports and that type of things, I think it's going to be great. Um, the NFL, uh, NBA, uh, Major League Baseball Finals. The sports um, uh, betting is going to be great. Um, so we should see how the small communities, and you'll see the benefit will be all over the coast to the small communities when people can go and buy local, you know, and obviously enjoy and engage with the locals in those communities. That will be key because that's one of the things that we're good at. And people is looking for places in which they can go, have a great time, communicate with that unique and authentic experience in a safe and, and sound way. So that's us. That's why we're seeing the numbers we're seeing. As simple as that, Ricky. So Milton, I had a conversation with someone last week and it reminded me that I've got to get Woody Bailey on the show, which I will have him on in the next week or two. He's an old friend. I've known him for, for a long, long, long time. But because of everything you just said, I predicted sort of an epic response to cruising the coast this, this year. What, what do you think? Well, let me tell you, Wood is one of the pioneers in our coast. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to know him. And, and cruising the coast, um, and we have spoke about this with, with Woody, and we'll continue talking about, we have to make sure that people understand that, uh, and you know, in, um, a few months ago in Sturgeon, I think it's the place, they have this big motorcycle situation, and the national media was right there because it was a different setup. 
we need to make sure people understand that coast of the uh, the cruise in the coast is a totally different event. That the demographic, the people that attend, it's it's very different. And and I can tell you, the plan that Woody and his team has put together will guarantee that we're going to be following all the regulations, all the uh, protocols, and people will be safe. Obviously, we're going to ask for their support so they comply with our recommendations and the state recommendations. But I think the show is going to be a phenomenal example to the world, to the world, Ricky, about how we can do things here in coastal Mississippi. Hey, Milton, can you hang on and join us for the beginning of the next segment for a second? Absolutely. Okay, and we'll have Linda Hornsby join us as well. We'll continue that part of the conversation about cruising the coast. What a terrific opportunity that is on the near horizon. So we'll, we'll be back with uh, Milton and Linda right after this break. Get out of the house and over to Big Play today. Two massive arcades, bowling, go-karts, two mini golf courses, a two-story state-of-the-art laser tag arena, bumper cars, and right now get a $50 game card for only 25 bucks. Visit our station's Facebook and print on demand so you can play at Big Play Entertainment Center now. These deals won't last long, so make sure you get your half-off deal. Big Play Entertainment Center, Highway 90 Biloxi. Bowl, play, eat. Go to our station's Facebook to get your half-off deal now. What decisions are being made by state lawmakers and how will they affect you, your family and community? If you listen, if you listen, you'll know. Super Talk Mississippi, the Super Talk app and at supertalk.fl. Hi, I'm Billy Kinder, host of Big Billy Kinder Outdoors. Here, the show Saturdays at 1, right here on Super Talk Mississippi. Turkeys, whitetail, Grenada Lake crappie, or Gulfport redfish. We enjoy it all, especially when you're in camp with us on Super Talk Mississippi. You could be spreading the coronavirus without realizing you have it. So do your part and stay home. It's important to limit in-person interaction with anyone outside of your immediate household, but phone and video chat are safe ways to connect. It's also important to limit social gatherings. If you need essential items like food and medicine, try using a delivery service. If you must leave your house for essential items or if you wanna take a walk for exercise, make sure to wear a cloth face covering. Stay at least six feet away from other people. Try not to touch frequently touched surfaces like light signals, street signs, or benches. And wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds as often as possible. This advice applies to people of any age, including teens and younger adults. It takes all of us to slow the spread of the coronavirus, so stay home unless absolutely necessary. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. Thousands of Bulldog fans have subscribed to the Thunder and Lightning podcast. Have you? On each episode, Brian Haydad and Joel Coleman give you an inside look at your Mississippi State Bulldogs. The Thunder and Lightning podcast is free and available on demand at supertalk.fm and on your smartphone. Just search for Thunder and Lightning on iTunes, Google Play, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Thunder and Lightning from Supertalk Mississippi, covering the Bulldogs like no one else. Hey, want to come work for the number one radio group on the coast? Telesouth Media has a great opportunity for an outside sales consultant. Get paid while having fun and work in the exciting, fast-paced world of radio. We have award-winning stations like 97.9 CPR Rocks, 105.9 The Monkey, G96.7, Super Talk 103.1, and 103.5 The Possum. Take the first step towards a new and rewarding career. Submit your resume to jesse at telesouth.com. That's J-E-S-S-E at telesouth.com. Telesouth Media is an equal employment opportunity employer. Welcome back to Coast View. Uh, boy, we are so lucky to live in paradise. I can't tell you. I, I, I can't say that enough, actually. Um, and we're lucky to have great leaders. And that's what this show is all about. It's about talking to the leaders who are making such a difference in coastal Mississippi. Let me invite Milton Segura, head of Coastal Mississippi Tourism, back in. And then Linda Hornsby, who's the executive director of the uh, Hotel and Lodging Association for the whole state of Mississippi. She lives in Biloxi, not far from me. 
In fact, she lives on the, uh, let's see, the, you live on the south shore of Biloxi Bay. So the right. north winds over the last few days were probably pretty challenging to you, were they? Very interesting. <laughs> yeah, we were lucky. We were lucky, Linda, because we had that north wind and that kept the storm surge down. I know. <laughs> and, uh, and as you know, when you walk out in your backyard, we could see the hurricane, the, yeah. the, the feeder bands, but they just really never made it here. Thank goodness. We I were know. so lucky. Yes. So, um, hey, what, where where we were in the in the conversation before you joined us, Linda? We're just talking about the cruise in the coast and how it's really kind of tailor made for the COVID situation. Uh, what's your early read on on the cruising? Well, Woody and I talked about it recently at at the um, Scarlet Pearl's opening of the Orchid Room, and he's always asking me, you know, what do the numbers look like? And you know, just like with his registrations, they are down uh, um, over last year, but they're they're good. It, this is always a great event for the coast, and um, and even the state. We we see a lot of the cruisers that travel down here you know, throughout the state of Mississippi on their way to the coast. And, and that's what we love. That's that's the perfect scenario. So it, it's looking good. It'll probably end up not being as good as last year, but but um, or the year or typical years. But it's up there. I, Linda, I think and, and Milton, you can chime in. But I think because people have had a lot on their minds, you know, the, I mean, obviously COVID and getting kids back into school and whatever their job situation might be. And you know what I mean? There's been a lot to take people's uh, attention, but as the, as the day gets closer and people start to really understand that, you know, and, and cer certainly the cruisers know this, that they, they can control their environment when they're in their cars. And when they start to see Woody's plan, it should really, I think, start to peak. I, I've, I've really predicted it in the, in the, in the, in the within the context of COVID, it's going to be an epic event, but, What's your what's your continued thoughts about that, Milton? I, well, I, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. If you want to go ahead, Linda, feel free. No, I was just going to say I, I could see where you were going. And, yes, I think in the next couple of weeks we are going to see it spike. Yeah. Milton? And you know what? I think that will happen. But this year's um, Cruise on the Coast is not about numbers. It's not about numbers, you know. Yeah. We're going to have a great event. But the most important thing is that um, people will come and they will see what we're capable of putting together. That's the key. That's the message to, to the state. That's the message to the states, uh, to the entire nation, because we can deliver. And that's the key in this, you know, at this particular moment in, in when people are, are deciding if I want to travel or not for fall, the fact that we can put this uh, gigantic um, event to that level, I, I think that's going to be the best promotion ever for the state. And um, if we if we get more people, fine. But if not, again, I don't think Wood is thinking about the numbers. I think it's more focused on on how this will at the end showcase the destination. Uh, no, Milton, I think that's a really good point. You mentioned Sturgis a second ago, and I wanted to mention to you that I read a story last week, actually, an analysis of the Sturgis event. There was a lot of negative press that said there was some kind of that would contribute as a super spreader event. Well, they've done an analysis and said that's did not happen, and so. You know, we've, we've got a situation here where, aside from Sturgis, by the way, where coastal Mississippi can show where we got this from the very beginning. Linda and her team were focused on, even before they could even open up the hotels, they were focused on really stepping up the clean cleanliness of, approach, uh, what they were doing to make the rooms, you know, to turn the rooms, to make sure that they were safe rooms for people to be able to go to, what you were focused on in terms of sending the message to the world that this is a safe place to visit um, and, you know, getting everybody aligned, the amount of education that we've had to do, you know, whether it be the casinos becoming incredibly safe to, to visit restaurants, you know, and you've talked about this so many times before, the ability to spread out on our beaches, the ability to tour, you know, take a tour of this wonderful place, the communities that make up coastal Mississippi, we're tailor made for the COVID environment. And and I, I agree with you. What a great opportunity to prove to the world through the cruising event where you have people coming in literally from all over the country to send the message to the world that we really do get this. That's just a tremendous opportunity for us. It is. So, Milton, why don't, we're going to shift gears now. Thank you for joining us. We'll come oh, over. It's a pleasure. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll try to maybe actually we'll have you and Woody together. To that would be great. That. And, um, you know, we, we'll get that planned here in the next next day or so. So. 
Linda, so we'll move over to you for a second. So how did how did the hurricane situation go for the hotels? Uh, well, it was, you know, a lot of <clears throat> the the unpredictability of it, you know, certainly didn't help because everybody was kind of watching and waiting to see um, what it was going to do. And thankfully, thankfully, we we escaped it. But um, but yeah, I, it, it hurt. It, it hurt a little bit, but then some of the some of the non-typical um, uh, tourism hotels that are uh, on the interstate or north of the interstate, you know, they they got business from utility crews who were either on their way to Lake Charles or back from Lake Charles and waiting to see where they were going next. So there's always that piece of business. Wow, forget about that. I mean, you yeah. you it's a it's. A- it's a big part of the the overall planning situation where you know, they're pre-positioning uh, all kinds of emergency personnel, I would assume. Yes. Big blocks yeah. of rooms. Absolutely. And then, yeah. of course, and, the and then we always have the uh, government business, military, uh, uh, especially up Highway 49 and north of the interstate. So that has filled in a lot. So before the hurricane hit, just uh, I, not before it hit, but before we had the the scare, um, how were things looking for you guys? Uh, looking good. Uh, we're still on the coast operating with um, at partial capacity. You know, there are still some larger hotels that are not fully open as far as all of their rooms, but it definitely is meeting demand. And, you know, the coast is outperforming the rest of the state. The state is outperforming the region and the region is outperforming the United States. So, um, so those are all good things. Milton shared some numbers at the beginning of the show. It showed the state down very significantly, which is not, not no big surprise, but the numbers are very compelling, which also go to, significantly reduced uh, taxes as a result of that, tax collections. Yeah. Um, and the coast, as a result of our overperformance relative to other markets, and other, certainly in Mississippi, um, that the percentage of the coast's importance has actually increased to the re- as it relates to the rest of the state. And I think it's another great reminder for all of our, all of the leaders across the state that it's important for the coast of Mississippi to have a well-oiled machine from a tourism point of view, because if we, when we're, when we struggle, the state struggles, you see that clearly, don't you? Yeah, we do. And, and I'm glad you said something about the revenue because, you know, only, we do, we don't look at occupancy that much anymore. We do, but we look at rev par and, and rooms sold. And while, Rooms sold might be down, rev par down, definitely. Um, it, it's for two reasons. For one thing, of course, COVID, everybody's rev par is down. Um, and, and ours down over last year, which was down. I have to interject that. But also the the segment of the, of the business that is growing through July, it was the budget properties. And I would say that was because families were traveling and that's typical through July. However, we haven't gotten August report yet, but I do have the daily report for August and 28 days running. And we're seeing mid-scale, the mid-scale segment increasing above the budget rooms. So what does that tell us? Adults are traveling. Yeah. And uh, because it, not not your typical families of four or five, um, it's it's adults, and that is that segment, the mid scale. I mean the the um, uh, upper scale, not the luxury, but the upper scale is is a segment that's growing for August. Well, that's really good to hear. Hey, so uh, for the, for listeners who don't know that number, uh, know that uh, metric rev par. Explain how you use that to sort of understand net revenues. And that's revenue per available room. So you take the total amount of room revenue that came in and you spread it over all the available rooms. It's basically a combination of occupancy and ADR, which is average daily rate. The the hotels are excellent at managing their their uh, average daily at their their daily rate. They they look at numbers that forecast and and they they'll change it hourly in some cases, and. Um, and so those are they can they can manipulate the ADR very very well and that's what they are supposed to do, but the rev par that's the true picture. 
So, uh, hey, let's talk for a second. Do you have uh, contacts over in Orange Beach and Gulf Shores and Pensacola? Yeah. So yeah. what are you hearing from your friends over there? Well, it, you know, it, it's it's devastating to them, but, you know, they, ha they have suffered before, just as we have, and they will bounce back. You know, I don't want to be a Pollyanna, but the only good thing is is that it happened this time of the year rather than in July, let's say, yeah. and yeah. they'll have the next several months to um, really get back on their feet. As, yeah, you know, Linda, as I learned after the oil spill, you know, having been in Mobile during that time and led the recovery effort, at least the planning effort for the governor during that time, that 25% of the state's uh, revenue comes, uh, the tourism revenue comes from Baldwin County in three months. <laughs> you know, that's, that, right. that's compelling. And, yeah. uh, you know, you're right. That The reason why that's important now is that that their season's sort of behind them now. Not that there aren't people going down there and enjoying it. Right. Um, and I talked to uh, Tony Kennan, the mayor of Orange Beach yesterday, and also Robert Kraft, the mayor of Gulf Shores, know them both very well. They'll both be on the show next week, incidentally. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, they, it's a mess. Uh, yeah. There's been some damage to some condos, and people have, you know, some people have water. In the, I mean, it's a mess. It's, it's what yeah. you get after a, a hurricane. But it's not like um, so devastating that within a matter of a couple of weeks they wouldn't be able to, you know, in most cases, be able to get back opened again. Yeah, correct. But places that are not devastated, you know, structures that are not devastated, they'll once they get their power back, they can get in there, clean up, yeah. you know, uh, re re uh, do what needs to be done, whether it's sheetrock or windows or whatever, and they'll be back on their feet. One of the emerging stories, <clears throat> we talked about this on the show yesterday, is the National Hurricane Center has got to make some adjustments in the way they do warnings. And uh, especially when there's a meandering storm close to close to shore, because a lot of people in those areas did not have a chance to prepare. And I think one That's of the right. places, you know, we see it here in coastal Mississippi, getting boats out of the way. The big story right. there is going to be the, the number of boats and that were damaged. Linda, thank you very much for taking a few minutes to visit with us. Good luck to you guys. Thank and you. Um, we'll talk to you soon. This All right. Linda Hornsby from the Hotel and Lodging Association. We'll be back in just a few minutes with my old friend, Pat Sullivan. Get out of the house and over to Big Play today. Two Thank massive you. arcades, bowling, go-karts, two mini Take golf care. courses, a two-story state-of-the-art laser tag and arena, app. bumper cars, Ricky. and right now get a $50 game card for only 25 bucks. Visit our station's okay, Facebook so, and print on demand so you can play at Big Play Entertainment your, Center now. Your, These your, deals won't last long, so make sure you get oh, your half-off yeah. deal. Big Play Entertainment Center, Highway yeah. 90 Biloxi. Bowl, Thank play, you. eat. Go to our station's Facebook to get your half-off deal now. What decisions are being made by state lawmakers and how will they affect you, your family and community? If you listen, if you listen, you'll know. Super Talk Mississippi, the Super Talk app and at supertalk.fl. Hi, I'm Billy Kinder, host of Big Billy Kinder Outdoors. Here, the show Saturdays at 1, right here on Super Talk Mississippi. Turkeys, whitetail, Grenada Lake crappie, or Gulfport redfish. We enjoy it all, especially when you're in camp with us on Super Talk Mississippi. You could be spreading the coronavirus without realizing oh, you have Lord. it. So do your part and stay you did, I was waiting for you to hold It's important your to limit in-person interaction oh, with anyone it. outside of your immediate wrong. household. Know, but phone and video chat are safe ways to connect. We didn't see it. I don't know. It's also did you change to limit social gatherings. So if you, you need essential items like food something. and medicine, I never try that. using a delivery service. If you must Shit, leave your house for happens. essential items okay, or if you want to take a walk for exercise, make sure to wear a cloth face covering. Stay at least six feet away from other people. Try not to touch frequently touch surfaces like light signals, street signs, or benches. And wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds as often as possible. This advice applies to people of any age, including teens and younger adults. It takes all of us to slow the spread of the coronavirus, so stay home unless absolutely necessary. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. Thousands of Bulldog fans have subscribed to the Thunder and Lightning podcast. Have you? 
On each episode, Brian Haydad and Joel Coleman give you an inside look at your Mississippi State Bulldogs. The Thunder and Lightning podcast is free and available on demand at supertalk.fm and on your smartphone. Just search for Thunder and Lightning on iTunes, Google Play, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Thunder and Lightning from Super Talk Mississippi, covering the Bulldogs like no one else. Hey, want to come work for the number one radio group on the coast? Telesouth Media has a great opportunity for an outside sales consultant. Get paid while having fun and work in the exciting, fast-paced world of radio. We have award-winning stations like 97.9 CPR Rocks, 105.9 The Monkey, G96.7, Super Talk 103.1, and 103.5 The Possum. Take the first step towards a new and rewarding career. Submit your resume to jesse at telesouth.com. That's J-E-S-S-E at telesouth.com. Telesouth Media is an equal employment opportunity employer. Welcome back to Coach View. That was a terrific conversation with Linda Hornsby and Milton Segarra. We're again, we're so lucky to have great leaders in coastal Mississippi doing amazing work to try to keep coastal Mississippi front and center in the minds of people across the country. And uh, man, it, we we uh, we're holding our own in this COVID environment. So now let's sh- switch gears. We're going to go over to Pat Sullivan. He's the fire chief for Harrison County. He's an old friend, and we'll talk about how we used to work together at some point along the way. So, Pat, come on in here. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Good morning. It's good to see you. So, um, tell me about. Um, first of all, what tell me what do you do? Tell us what you do. Well, basically, I do everything a fire chief does. I'm responsible for the all the unincorporated area of Harrison County. Fire protection, EMS, rescue, all those things that uh, go along with that. Yeah, so that's that's uh, that's important. And I guess with the approaching Sally and the sort of hurricane warning scenario, it kicks in all kinds of emergency plans. Tell me about what you guys do to prepare for a storm. Oh gosh, you know it's um, there. There are so many facets to this. Um, but the primary thing that we do is number one, make sure that we are ready to go that all of our uh, resources are there, all of our plans are in place, and that we'll be able to respond uh, before the storm, during the storm, and after the storm. We have to make sure that our people are are taken care of and that their families are taken care of because we know when we come to work, the chances are that we're not gonna be home again for for quite a while. So um, we do all those things and, and then we go into the mode of trying to make sure the public is informed the public knows what to do. The public uh, has some some uh, uh, um, plans and and um, some options, if you will, uh, for for uh, maybe sheltering or evacuation and those kind of things. Wow. So uh, and then of course afterwards, uh, all kinds of stuff happens. I guess it all depends on the situation that you face. But thank goodness you didn't have to face it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we've been blessed. Um, um, uh, we, we, we got hit to the, to the left, we got hit to the right, but we didn't get a bullseye on us. Um, every year we go through the same thing and we prepare and we're ready for it. And we, and, and, and everybody has said this a hundred times, we don't want anybody else to get it, but we don't want it. So yeah. we'll, we'll do what we got to do. And then we'll try to support those people that, that did get hit. Yeah. It's, you know, it's really, it's interesting because I've seen a lot of discussion about this on social media. It's not about wishing and hoping that someone else gets it. 
because it is what it is. You, we can't control it. It's it's going to hit where it's going to hit. It's going to do what it's going to do. And um, and you can be thankful and you can count your blessings that it wasn't you that took the direct hit. And then those that did hit, you can try to ra- try to rally the troops to go help them. And you know, because we're good at that here in coastal Mississippi, we're good at reaching out to our neighbors. Um, but we didn't get hit. So, what extent do you worry, Pat, that? The, um, the these close calls, you know, uh, Cal Curley, our, our producers talked about this, that these you had Marco, then Laura, and now this really extended close call by Sally that it causes people to get complacent. And you, you hear me, you hear me. Pat? I lost that last part. It calls. Yeah. To what? to what extent does it, are you concerned that people get, will get complacent because of all the close calls? Um, you know, I, I, I really don't think in my mind, I don't think people get complacent on the close calls when they look around and say, okay, those people got hit bad and recognize the fact that it was, it was a close call for us, but it could have been just us just as easy. I, the ones that really, um, that I, I find is in the past where you had two or three storms that would, would show up somewhere and then they go far away and, and then not impact us. Um, those then people would say, well, I'm not going to evacuate because I got ready last. Yeah. You, you, that's, that's not the smart, that's not the smart way to do it. Yeah. The you one, the one that comes to mind was the year of Katrina hurricane Dennis. It caused yeah. the evacuation of new Orleans. And then ultimately I think hit over in the Navarre beach area. But you know, there's a, a, what we preach on this show is just look at each and every storm. Like it's like it's uh, its own storm and has its own characteristics and we have to deal with the situations for for what they are at the end of the moment i mean that's that's the best way to look at it isn't it, isn't it? yeah it is and, and and here's what i want to do is i want you to to absolutely fault me if i'm not ready but never fault me if i'm ready and it doesn't come here so yeah exactly um, that's that's the, that's that's the way to look at that Prepare for the worst and hope for the best, for sure. Absolutely. So, pa- Pat Sullivan, the fire chief of Harrison County, you have had, you're a cat with nine lives. <laughs> How many different career moves have you made? Tell me, tell me those positions. Gosh, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. It, it, and, you know, the funny thing about it is, um, I, I really haven't moved. I spent 36 years in one place at the uh, Del Port Fire Department, enjoyed every second that I was there, and then moved basically, did, my next move basically was into the county um, after I retired from the city. But I have done so many things in that period of time that I did it from, uh, you know, being a, being a firefighter, uh, being a paramedic now for over 35, 40 years, being a uh, dive rescue, uh, uh, doing the photography, uh, working in the media, just all those things. It's just, but it's, I've been blessed. It's been a, a ride that, um, that I wish everybody could, in, could go through. And, and when I leave this earth, when I depart, I won't have any, any uh, regrets about my career. It's so interesting. You know, of course, our paths have, have um, crossed so many different ways. When we were, we were a paramedic together at one time in our careers, Back in 1977, <laughs> that's aging us, buddy. That's aging us. Yeah, but, but you it's look true. Good. We worked together, and then of course, as I continued my career and, and went on to, I, I was in pre med for a while, but went on to get my MBA at Southern Miss and then go to work for the Sun Herald. We our paths crossed a thousand times in the, in those positions because you were always a spokesman of some sort, and. Um, you were involved in dive rescue. Are you? Are, do you still get involved in dive rescue even today? Absolutely. Um, I be, I may be old, but I'm not finished. I am. Okay. Uh, I uh, work every day at trying to uh, keep up with the younger the younger guys. But but you know the deal is if you're not out there leading from the front, um, you, you you miss something. And so I try to to keep all my certifications up. Um, I'm still making medical calls. Uh, every day going on on all the different calls that we have. I'm still fighting fire. Um, and, and I think that, that that's a way to keep yourself young and involved. And, you know, and once it gets in your blood, it's always in your blood. Um, you know, I 
It's interesting because I think that a lot of people who are paramedics or former paramedics, they find themselves in situations all the time where they have to use the skills that they were taught, where they'd be on the side of the road, you know, to wreck or coming up on someone who may need CPR. Uh, it's just, it's a, it's a blessing to have these skills, isn't it? Oh, it absolutely is. And it's, and it's offered so many opportunities um, uh, throughout my career to do things. You know, one of the things that, that, that I think about occasionally is the fact when, when you, when you think about, have you made a difference in somebody's lives as a paramedic, as a first responder, you have absolutely made a different in, difference in people's lives. You have saved people that would be dead without you being there. And so every paramedic that's out there, every first responder that's out there uh, that, that does that, takes that with them throughout their life that, that they've made a difference for somebody. Even if it was just one person, they've made a difference. And most of us, um, by the by, the grace of the good Lord, have been able to do this for a long, long time and and save a lot of lives. Pat, I have I have so many memories. You know, God gifted me with a good memory. Thank God. But uh, I remember you and Sandy delivered twins in College Park once. Did, do you remember that? Oh, that was so long ago. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they probably have uh, uh, grown up and gone to college and. Uh, <laughs> And maybe even retiring now, <laughs> but you know it's just things like that. Uh, and, and you know the other thing you have is is to have crossed people like Sandy Dubaz and yourself and all the people that we have um, that we have worked with in the most traumatic and the most exciting and the most stressful uh, situations, and to come out on the other side of it, it's a bond that you just don't get in a normal job in a normal world. Boy, isn't that Gosh, that's so true. You know, I'm just thinking about through my communications through Facebook, for for example, with Sandy being one of them, and uh, and so many others that we came in contact during those days. We're still, we it's just like it was yesterday. It's a, it's the strangest thing, man. But it is. It's like you've been to war together, and you've you've experienced that 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 sort of stress, and some cases cases maybe some post traumatic stress syndrome, depending on you know, what the situations were, but it does create an amazing bond. But you know, buddy, you've been such, you know, we're getting to the end of the segment, but you've been such an amazing leader here in coastal Mississippi over so many years. And I'm so happy to see you still kicking and happy and uh, focused and leading in a positive way. And we're so lucky to have you. And I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you. Well, I thank you. And, and, you know, this is, this is not a job. This is my life. And I love the people of the coast. I love everybody that's out there and, and that's why I do it. And, and that's yeah. why all, all of our people do it. Well, listen, thanks for joining us today. We'll be back to you in a month or so and just check in. This has been Pat Sullivan, the fire chief for Harrison County. When we come back, Kyle and I are just going to talk a little bit about the saints and whatever else is on our mind. We'll see you after this break. Super Talk. Nobody keeps Mississippi informed like we do. With 12 stations covering all 82 counties. If it happens in your state, we're on top of it. The news, the weather, the sports, and the talk that's important to you. The issues that matter to you, your family, and your bank account. It's all right here. And when you're away from home, depend on the Super Talk app and supertalk.fm to stay in the know. We're proud to serve our fellow Mississippians. Super Talk Mississippi. We know that we're asking Americans to do a lot right now. So we're asking everyone to be selfless for others so that we can protect those who are most susceptible to this virus. A question I often get asked is why should young people care about the spread of coronavirus? Well, we know that people with underlying medical conditions over the age of 60 are at highest risk, but they've got to get it from somebody. Social distancing is really physical separation of people it's what we refer to when we ask people to stay at least six feet apart. Not going to bars, not going to restaurants, not going to theaters where there are a lot of people. It all just means physical separation so that you have a space between you and others who might actually be infected or infect you. We all have a role to play in preventing person-to-person -person spread of this disease, which can be deadly for vulnerable groups. For more information on how you can social distance, please go to coronavirus.gov. 
Hey, I'm Steve Azar, and you never know who or what you'll hear when I spend a Mississippi minute with my friends. We are with the fabulous Norbert Putnam as he played on so many hit records, you can't count them, and produced for some of the biggest acts ever. Uh, Norbert, Elvis. And I want to tell you about Presley. He had two different voices. He would sit and talk to me in a very calm, low voice. And we were at Stax one night, and we were having lunch. We always had lunch at midnight because he was nocturnal. We sat there, and we have our sandwiches, and at 1 o'clock, he looked up. He said, hey, Pot, come on, it's time for me to go beat off. And he stood up in a much deeper voice. He put on his macho voice. Hey, fellas, uh, it's 1 o'clock. <laughs> Let's get cracking, okay? In a Mississippi Minute. Be sure to check out In a Mississippi Minute with me, Steve Azar, right here on Super Talk Mississippi, Amazon Alexa, and now on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Anybody can be a firefighter, male, female, younger, older. We are school teachers. We are leaders in business. It's me, you, anyone that wants to be. There is no typical firefighter. Everyone knows the only thing better than pizza is free pizza. And right now, buy a $10 gift certificate to CeCe's Pizza for only $5. It's like buying a pizza and getting a pizza for free. Go to our station's website or Facebook. Look for the Half Off Deals logo to purchase this amazing deal right now. We give HPV vaccine to children at 11 or 12 years of age. I have four children, two boys and two girls, and I've given the vaccine to all of them. Get out of the house and over to Big Play today. Two massive arcades, bowling, go-karts, two mini golf courses, a two-story state-of-the-art laser tag arena, bumper cars, and right now get a $50 game card for only $25. Visit our station's Facebook and print on demand so you can play at Big Play Entertainment Center now. These deals won't last long, so make sure you get your half-off deal. Big Play Entertainment Center, Highway 90 Biloxi. Bowl, play, eat. Go to our station's Facebook to get your half-off deal now. Welcome back to Coast View. This show does celebrate the men and women who are making this such a great place to live, work, and play. At the beginning of the show, we talked to Milton Segarra. He's doing such a good job of leading our coastal Mississippi tourism efforts. Linda Hornsby, what a great friend she's been, and her leadership of the Hotel and Lodging Association. And she's just such a good person. And, of course, Pat Sullivan. I mean, man, Pat Sullivan, I call him the... Cat with nine lives. So he's been in so many different and important roles over the years and still kicking and screaming as it relates to emergency surgery, uh, emergency services as the current chief of the fire department for Harrison County. Um, Cal, are you there, buddy? I'm here. Okay. It's good to see you, man. Listen, uh, at the beginning of the show, we talked a little bit about the saints and I said, we'll talk about it next week, but it hit me that we have a chance at the end of the show to chat about it for, for a bit. So Cal, for, for you don't know, Cal Curley, the producer of Coast View, he's a man who wears many hats at Telesouth. He's the voice for multiple radio stations. He does news and weather and, you know, is my sidekick here on Coast View. Uh, he also does the music during the Saints games at the Superdome. And, of course, with no fans, it had to have been a strange experience. What Tell us about that. It was definitely weird. You're starting to play roll-in music, walk-in music, we call it, with nobody in the building. And you know there's nobody coming in the building. So the vibe was different, but the players, I think, were jacked up. They had We had our practice squad was in the stands. So the players would turn around and hype up the crowd, i.e. the practice squad, <laughs> and the practice squad would retaliate. It was great. Um, good atmosphere. And apparently a lot of people watched it. Yeah. Hey, one of the questions I had, I paid a lot of attention. I know you weren't actually, you, you, you're not the guy who had your finger on the button for crowd noise, right? Somebody else did that. Technically. No. Okay. So what I'm curious about though, is like when it's a third down play from, from, for the other team, usually you would see a lot of crowd noise. Then 
I didn't see it the way that you would expect to see it in the game. Is that by design or did somebody miss something? Tell me about that. No, we technically don't call it crowd noise. They like to call it curated audio for the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be a union job. Yeah, so um, tell me about it. It's the it. NFL. Decide when you're going to do it. It Well, there's two different sets of curated audio. There's audio that we play from our booth that's just for the inside bowl. And the crowd noise that you hear on TV is controlled by the NFL. They have somebody that controls the audio that you hear on TV for the broadcast. Wow, that's that's interesting. But, but we're I, limited but to it's a like, like it's third down, third down and one. Saints have to be you know have to play strong defense. Right. I want the noise. To, I want somebody to turn the volume up. Right. We do too. <laughs> um, except we have this huge decibel meter in front of us. It says, don't breach this point. <laughs> they mean it, don't they, Kyle? Yeah, they do. They yeah. have a guy, literally, that's his only job, walks up and down the side uh, sideline with a DB meter, and he stands at the line of scrimmage. You <sighs> cannot cross the threshold of 75 DB during a game. Goodness gracious. So uh, I bet it was good to get back and just see all your cohorts there, huh? It was, but with COVID, our... PA booth is limited. Last year, I think we had probably nine or 10 people in that room. And this year we're down to five. Wow. So That's... yeah, it's really pared down. It's different. So, so, you know, when I used to go to games to the media area where you could go get a hot dog and whatever, did they still do that? Not where you can sit and eat there. No, it's more of a sandwich box. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah, so Michael Thomas. Go. Yeah, Michael Thomas gets a high ankle sprain, sprain and uh, everybody's this big gasp. Um, <laughs> what's your thoughts about that? I think we're going to be fine. I mean, the threat is definitely going to be missed, but I think there's enough targets to spread the ball around. Yeah, no, NOLA.com did a great review this morning. They said, of course, you got Emmanuel Sanders. He's a different kind of a player, but just creates more opportunities for them. Of course, Jared Cook, he's going to have another great year, it looks like. Yeah, and, and and we got Alvin Kamara still, and Alvin Kamara is healthy. You know, my, yes. Alvin Kamara is uh, is really looking on top of his game, and then of course they they're really high on Traquan Smith, and he he's going to get an opportunity to play more, I bet. And, yeah, uh, and then and they, I wouldn't be surprised if we went out and got somebody else. Yeah, well, they might, but they've got some talent, man. I mean, they then they got this young guy that they brought on this new uh, this new um, tight end that they've got. We may see him more. So, and then of course, Taysom Hill, dude, he the they, old Swiss army knife. Well, they say, okay, Taysom, just go be Michael Thomas. <laughs> I mean, right. obviously they're not going to do that, but the point is they have so much diversity on their offense. They have a real opportunity now to show us some, some more talent. I, I don't yes. think that's a lick, buddy. I really don't. I don't either. I think we're going to be good. We've got uh, less than a minute, by the way. Okay. Um, I think we'll be fine. We, you know. Season's going to be a little bit different. We might get fans in the stadium, maybe game four, three or four of the season at home. Yeah. We'll have to see how it goes. We'll, we'll try to get Jeff Duncan back soon and let him talk more about the situation. But anyway, thank you so much for working with us. We'll do another live show tomorrow, and then we'll try to get back on with our normal schedule, really diving deep into leaders of Coastal Mississippi. So thank you for joining us here on Coastal, and thank you, Kyle, for, for chiming in at the end of the show. Have a great day.